All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Black Hammer 2021. Playing the, I'm playing on WWE 2K23. I'm also, I'm also going to do my WWE SmackDown review from last night, and I will talk about AEW Collision that's on tonight. I will go through all the, all the news and rumors about what happened. I will talk about SmackDown last night and AEW Collision. I'll talk about uh, what happened with Triple H. Um, um, these are the matches that happened on SmackDown last night. Charlotte and Oscar, AJ Styles, Karen Cross, Rey Mysterio and Austin Theory. We did get Ella Knight and Top Dollar, and then we, and then we did and then we did get the ending segment on SmackDown with the Bloodline. But anyway, hit that like button, leave a comment, please subscribe to my channel. This video is sponsored by Solomon the Sound Off, Fight for Pro Wrestling, JD from New York. There is the Wrestling Inc., the Wrestle Talk Podcast. I got more in the way, so hit that like button, leave a comment, enjoy my video. I hope it goes maybe 25 or 30 minutes, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't want to make a video of myself, might as well do it while I'm just playing this game. I did it like this week with SummerSlam. Might as well do it just one with SmackDown. Only reason why I'm doing it because I don't wait because I don't trust uh, using my phone to make a uh, video. I did I did get a new phone uh, today, and I've been having some problems, you know, with accessing to my social media account, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. I can't use Instagram because of the of, of the new phone I have. Because of the type of phone I have, so I can't use Instagram, so that sucked. I, I can't use Twitter for about a month, so that also sucked, because I do go on Twitter a lot. To to, to um to look at the other podcasters and other YouTubers, and to look at the rest of the news, so I, I can't use Twitter for a while, and that really sucks. But I can use YouTube, I can use Facebook. I think I will use those more often. And I'll probably get rid of my old my old phone and keep the new phone but um uh let's get right into it all right might we'll get right into the uh, smackdown first now AEW is on right now it's actually almost over uh the main event is uh CM Punk and FTR versus Versus the House of Black with uh, Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews, and the other guy for the Trio Championship. That's the main event for AW Collision. It's a pretty good match so far. Uh, 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 let's see who's gonna win it. Um. So, um, might we get into SmackDown first. So, S SmackDown was okay. It wasn't the best show. It was decent. It was alright. There, uh, there was nothing really much outside the bloodline. And outside everything that they're doing. So, the opener of SmackDown, we got Charlotte Flair versus Asuka. This match was whatever, it was a decent math. The math ended, I think, on a DQ because damage control got involved. And EO, Dakota, Bailey, they interfered. They cost Charlotte the math. Charlotte not gonna math. They both, they brawled for a bit. And that was it. Now, I don't care if see Charlotte and Oscar. It's it, the same old shit with these two. We've seen this math time and time again. We saw that feud. And the math ended in a DQ could uh, damage control got involved. The way how they put Eel tonight by her coming out there and attacking Charlotte and Asuka as transitional champion. She may be a transitional champion to where she might lose that title. Well, well, well the math ended in, the math ended in a DQ. Ah, uh, whatever. Ended in a DQ. So who is Eel gonna wrestle? Is it going to be Oscar or Charlotte? Because Charlotte wasn't pinned at SummerSlam. Uh, there was no sign of Bianca on SmackDown. She's selling the injury of her 
of her being injured. I don't know if it was a legit injury or if, if it was a story injury and she's off TV for a while. I don't know. Maybe they'll do Asuka and Io at at the next pay-per-view at Payback, maybe. It shouldn't be Charlotte because Charlotte shouldn't win the title back. Eels, you have a long title reign, a memorable title reign. Do Asuka and Io. And with the report of... Uh, what's her name? Um, um, the reports of Kyrie Zane coming back. It could. After that, we did get a AJ Styles versus Karrion Cross. That was a pretty good match, a decent match between these two. AJ Styles gets the win here. These two have feuded for about probably two months or two and a half months, I think. Um, they've been going back and forth. AJ Styles got the win a few weeks ago, and then Cross he beat Carl Anderson. AJ Styles wins here. Now, based on the the vignette and the video package that Karen Quad made, I think it was last week or it was, it was earlier this week. I, I don't know. But he did tease that he might have someone else join him. Maybe he might tease the fashion. I don't know. Don't think that'll work for Cross. I think we have enough fastens on the main water. We have a pretty good tag division. We have enough fastens here. But anyway, AJ Styles, he gets the win against Karen Kwan in a pretty good match. So I think the feud is over. Don't know where they go from here. Where does AJ Styles go? He's not going after Roman Reigns. He's not going after no world championship. Where Kwan going to go? I don't want to see where's Ray Mysterio. So speaking of Ray Mysterio, we did get the United States Championship. Ray Mysterio versus... Austin Theory. Austin Theory. Versus Ray Mysterio. It was supposed to be Austin Theory. Versus um, Santo Zacobar. Because Santo beat Ray Mysterio. Two weeks ago. That didn't happen. During that. We did get a bad day seven. With Austin Theory attacking Santo Zacobar. He went after his knee. Took him out. Austin Theory came out there. And said he's not going to defend the title tonight. Santos Escobar, he ran out there towards his entrance. He came down towards his entrance, and Austin Theory attacked him again by his leg, took him out. Adam Page said, no, that's not going to happen. Austin Theory will defend the title right here, right now, tonight. And it's going to be against Rey Mysterio. And Rey Mysterio took his place. And this wasn't really much of a man. It didn't last that long. It was like, what, six minutes? It might have been like six or seven minutes. It was very, very short. They, they could not wait to get that belt off Austin Theory. Austin Theory had won the worst title wins of all time. Austin Theory title win was lackluster. He was pretty much non-existing. He was both like, shit, he didn't do anything with the title. Since he me, he didn't do anything with the title. Sure, he may have defended the title, but he didn't do shit with it. He'd been like, he'd been a weak champion. He'd been very forgotten about. He'd been like an afterthought. This, his title win is worse than Dean Ambrose. Let me know in my comments section. Who had the worst uh, U.S. title reign? Was it Dean Ambrose or Austin Theory? Now, 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 to me, I think with Dean Ambrose, because Dean Ambrose, he was United States champion for over a year, to 2013, uh, to 2013 and 2014, and he didn't do shit with the title. How many times did he defend it? He held that title like an afterthought. It was like a paperweight, and then, and then we lost the title. I don't think people cared. Now granted, he was in the shield, and um, there was no plan for Dean Ambrose. But man, that title win was shit. Austin Theory, Tony Wayne, he had it since Survivor Series last year. Uh, he had some good matches with Seth Rollins, and had a few with Bobby Lashley. He defended against five guys inside the chamber. He beat John Cena at WrestleMania, and the way how he won, I know people complain the way how he won, because he wasn't clean, he actually cheated. He low blowed John Cena and got the win, and it felt like an afterthought. And John Cena was white. He came out on that white, and the crowd booed him. They chanted, You tapped out. They chanted, You were full crap. That was the story that John Cena said to Austin Theory going into that match. That, but then he got to go out on the white at the mania in front of the most ruthless, aggressive WR, and they'll eat you alive, and then they'll see what he see. You're full crap. 
Because every week the crowd kept saying, you tapped out. Kind of shooting on Austin Theory and the title reign. But same thing, he hasn't done shit with it. Since WrestleMania, since Backlash, when he beat Bronson Reed and Bobby Lashley. But since then, he's been like an afterthought. He had no one to feud with. And that's why his title reign was forgettable. Now, I will talk about this. I think they'll be wasting our time with this United States with 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 those fatal four way matches, cause you know, cause for weeks now, for like three four weeks, we had those fatal four way United States Invitational matches, to where whoever wins faces Austin Theory. Now we thought it was gonna be Ellen Knight. We thought Austin Theory was gonna defend at SummerSlam. That didn't happen. Ellen Knight he lost the fatal four way. Santos Escobar he won the fatal four way, and he faced Rey Mysterio. But the thing is, Santos Escobar beat Austin Theory clean for the U.S. title. In a non tile match two weeks ago, and then he beat Wayne Mysterio. Well, not clean, it, it was a fuck finish because Wayne Mysterio got hurt in the match, and they had to do a ref stopping where they stopped the match and awarded Sandal the victory. So that told me, well, Sandal didn't win the title, he's not, he's not winning clean against Austin Theory. And then when we get the match, he gets taken out, he sold a knee injury. Wayne Mysterio took his place, won the match real quickly. So hopefully it's all setting up. Maybe this might be tension with the LWO. Maybe it might. Maybe Santo might turn heel. Maybe the LWO might turn on Way Mysterio. I doubt it, but they could do that and do Santos and Way because Santos are jealous that Way t- took his opportunity. Maybe they will feel and we'll get that big map. We can tell that big story. I don't know. I don't know where we're going from here. Don't tell me Way Mysterio won because he's a baby face and L Knight is a heel and L Knight might win the title. Hope that's not the case. If that's the case, then why didn't L Knight be Austin Theory? L Knight getting baby face reactions. He was on the show tonight and when he got a mega pop, he beat Top Dollar and nothing match. Don't know if if L Knight is on War SmackDown, I don't know. He was he, he was on Monday Night Raw, he had that great promo seven with the Miz. Now he's on SmackDown, rather than hit well. Don't know why. Is he going to be in the? Uh, is, is, is he going to be winning the United States Championship from Rey Mysterio? Maybe they'll do it on pay per view. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, Rey Mysterio won the match. He beat Austin Theory. Well, damn. I thought like, what a waste of Austin Theory. Austin Theory must like shit. Where the now where did Theory go after this? I don't know. Maybe get paired with Grayson Waller. I don't know. Now we wait with Theory. Hopefully we tell something with him and Sandra Escobar, and they can do something with there. But yeah. Okay, so after that we did get um we did get Ed Ed came out Ed was Ed was not advertised for the show he was advertised for next week but he wasn't advertised tonight he came out and he challenges Sheamus to a match for his 25th year anniversary in the company you know I think next week or I think it was last night or next week. As to celebrate the 25 years of him in WWE, the 25th anniversary, he came out. He he challenges Sheamus. He wanted to face someone they never faced before in a one-on-one match. And it's crazy, like all the years that he'd been in WWE, all the years that Sheamus had been, like almost 15 years. So as and Sheamus will be next week in Toronto in Ed's hometown. Ed and Sheamus for the first time ever in a one-on-one match. This is the match that a lot of people are interested in. I'm looking forward to it. I love Ed. I don't care what Ed does, but Ed is my favorite of all time. I love Ed. I've been a fan of Ed for a very long time. I'm a fan of Sheamus. I do feel bad for Sheamus after what happened at WrestleMania. Um, there haven't been any plans for Sheamus yet. Ed, he had no plans after this. Because Ed, he, he got done with the, the whole Judgment Day feud. So now we're going to do Ed and Sheamus next week. Should be a good match. 
Now, Jamie and Ned do have some history of them being friends, them they train together, as, as also talked about Jamie's YouTube channel of him working out. And they did show that on SmackDown, which I thought was kind of silly, when they showed them riding their bikes and, and they showed them training in, in the gym. So we will get that match next week as in Sheamus. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good match. I don't know where we're going with Ed from here, but I don't care. I mean, I'm just glad to see Ed on TV wrestling. Ed ain't got that many, many years left. Ed is also up there in his, almost in his 50s. Now, Ed did beat Grace, uh, Grayson Waller a few weeks ago in Madison Grand Garden. Is he going to beat Sheamus or is Sheamus going to win? And they might tell a story here. I don't know. Alright, after that we did get Bobby Lashley and the Three Profits in a pretty good segment. So Lashley and the Three Profits vowed to take over SmackDown and be the net blood. So they talked about last week when they attacked, when the Three Profits turned heel and they attacked the OC and the Brawling Brute. I'm, lo I'm loving what they're doing here. It's very interesting. Bobby Lashley building up a new fashion. The Three Profits turning heel. I thought it was pretty good. Hopefully that I'm glad we're seeing Lashley on TV. I don't think Lashley has wrestled. And it been, it been a few months now since Lashley was in the ring. I think since May, I think that was the last time Lashley wrestled with him back in May. And the Three Profits, um, I'm loving what they're doing here. It's uh, pretty decent. Lashley and the Three Profits are getting over. And, and finally, we will talk about the entire thing with the bloodline that ended the show. So we get a uh, woman Wayne comes out, says acknowledge me. Jimmy Uso comes out, and he explains his action to his brother Jay. I mean, I mean, first Wayne came out. He came out with just one belt with the Universal title. Jay and then Jimmy Uso came out and said, "What I did on at SummerSlam had nothing to do with you, woman. It's with his brother." So after that. Jay Uso came out. Jimmy tells his brother why he did what he did. He said the reason why he attacked his brother was because he loved him and because he didn't want him to win and be tribal chief because he didn't want him to be like Woman Reigns. Okay. I know a lot of people thought that the bloodline story had had shark jumped, that it ran in court, that maybe it dragged out too long. But that was the plan by WrestleVote and by Bad Day Creative and other people in WWE saying that um, they plan to have a long term book and some people think that this story might drag on all the way to WrestleMania 40 next year. Some people think that we might get Jimmy and Jay at WrestleMania. People say, oh, oh that's a WrestleMania match. No, it's not. I don't think that could happen that way too long. I think they might feud at Payback on September 2nd. I think that will be because I don't think Woman Reigns is going to be on pay-per-view. And you need a big match and a big build. It might be Jimmy or Jay. So after Jimmy gets done saying what he did to uh, Jay. Um, we did get Jimmy Uso walking out of the ring. Woman Reigns telling him, I told you so. He said, now with me. And... Jay Uso super kid Roman Reigns solo beats him up. Jay super kid solo. Jay gets out of the ring. I'm I'm just gonna skip ahead and go to the ending of this, where Jay he gets out of the ring. He calls near his brother. He he teases to, to try and hug him, but he super kid Jimmy Uso, and Jay Uso walked out of the arena. He went up the crowd. He, he walked into the crowd. Ali Wiener said, "I'm done with the bloodline. I'm out." I'm done with SmackDown. I'm WWE. Jay Uso quits WWE. Some people think, oh, is he going to AEW? Is he going to be off TV for a while? Maybe a few months? I think he'll be off TV for a few weeks and then he'll come back. 
I thought the segment was okay. It dragged it on a little bit too long. But I get why they did it. Some people think it might be kind of lame. I thought it was all right. I think it was decent. But, um... Um, yeah. So, what I thought about this whole bloodline thing... Now, as you guys know, that Roman Reigns is not going to be... He, he's not the friend of the Tower Payback or Fairy, so he's missing three pay-per-views. I don't think that it's going to be Roman and Jimmy. It's not going to be Jay and Roman again. Maybe Roman and Jimmy? I doubt it. But maybe it could be Jimmy or Jay. I think we're waiting way too long. You got... We're in August, September, October, November, December, January, the Chamber... And they got February, March, and then April. I think that it is way too long. I don't think that we need that. I think that, I think that, um, that math is way too long. So, um, yeah. SmackDown was pretty decent. Outside the bloodline and what's going on with Bobby Lashley and the Three Profit, Ez and Sheamus. Wayne Theory won the uh, US title. Uh, the woman who gives shit, but SmackDown was alright. Very... SmackDown starting to feel a little bit slim. At least Monday Night was a lot better, but SmackDown does need some work. So, I don't know where they're going to go with the whole bloodline thing. They could do Roman and, G and Jimmy a payback, but I don't think so. It might be a fast lane. And they could do Jimmy and Jay a payback. And then it, and maybe Solo might get involved. What if Solo didn't like that brothers are fighting? And he tried to break them up. He tried to do something. Because what's Solo going to do? And what's Roman Reigns going to do? Roman Reigns is your Universal Champion. What's he going to do? Well, I get that was SmackDown. Really, that's all I gotta say about SmackDown. After AEW Collision that was on tonight, I, I don't think it said the show was live. It said the show was new. It doesn't say live. It said new. So was it pre-taped? Or maybe it is live. I don't know. I'm just gonna go into the main event of this show. Uh, Samoa Joe got involved. I think he attacked CM Punk. He attacked CM Punk. House of Black retains. So CM Punk got screwed over by Samoa Joe. He came out and put the the careful clock on CM Punk. House of Black they won. They pinned FTR, and they're still champions. So Samoa Joe and CM Punk will definitely continue. We'll see where the House of Black goes. Okay. Um. Um. Okay, as you guys know that a wiki Stark declared war against CM Punk, so those two are still feuding. The build to AEW All In is uh, coming up in a few weeks. I think it's like before Payback. Oh, whoop, my bad. Um, hold on. Oh, 
Alright. Uh, Collision was the best wrestling show on television. We did get a tag team grudge match with TBS champion Chris Statlander being joined by Widow Nightland, Nightland Gale to face Mercedes Martinez and uh, DMA. And the return of the A claim to. And the return of the A claim to Tan Team Madison. You're wondering what the initial CMSCR means. Um, <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know who's on. Um. So we got Ricky Star suspended and the Club War on CM Punk. So he's still gonna. He's still continuing to feud with CM Punk, which is pretty good. We also got. Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, so we, as I said, the A claim Matt Catter and Anthony Bowen versus the Iron Savage and Bronson and Boulder, and a pretty good match tonight. So far, Collision has been great, but on fire lately. AEW beat Collision at W. Is the AEW Collision beat W at Wembley's? All right. So they're still building CM Punk and Ricky Stark and some old Joe. Okay. Um. Now I I also wanted to talk about as you guys know that uh Triple Weights was removed from. The WWE Board of Directors. WWE. That's the news and rumors in WWE right now. Is that Triple H was removed from WWE Board of Directors, and it's a major red flag. A new WWE sex film has revealed ten of the eleven members of the Board of Directors of TKO Group Holden, which is a new company that has been created from a WWE UFC merger, which is expected to be finalized this fall. Out of the five WWE board members, uh, Triple H will not be one of them, which is a major red flag for fans and the company. Also, major health update on Bray Wyatt, with the company eyeing him, eyeing a September return for him. And RV, RVD impresses AEW on Wednesday night against Jack Perry. Is RVD set to become All Elite for AEW? Means he might stay there for a while. And you got and and the other news and rumor that I will be talking about. Tony Khan and Endeavor want to take credit for everything Triple H has done. Endeavor wants to make NFT on Tuesday night a substantial third brand. And credit Nick Khan for it. Meanwhile, we all know it's already a third brand before they destroyed it for their own personal gain. Also, Kenny Omega's math for all wins seemingly revealed. And is War Games coming back to Survivor Series? Uh, the main watcher seems to think so, even though they didn't confirm it, but I think Triple H wants it back to make Survivor Series mean something. I almost forgot, um, in case you guys are wondering, I did not do an AEW Dynamite review. I didn't have enough time. Can Jack stop the whole fucking show? Dynamite was alright. So, um, f for AEW Dynamite on Wednesday, Adam Cole chooses Roger Strong over MJF. RVD vs. Jack Perry, as I talked about. So as you guys know, Owen draws ever closer, and we got several challenges laid out. One AEW World Championship match made with Adam Cole challenging MJF tonight. Will we see a two-time AEW AEW Women World Champion with Hado Saga defends against Anna J at on the same night, the JAS. As a mandatory meeting that could very well determine the future of Chris Jericho's group. 
plus FTW champion Jack Perry defending in W Hall of Famer Wa Wa Van Dam. The Hardys and the Young Bucks fight for the first time since Double or Nothing 2022. And the Blackpool Combat Club takes on the Luther Brothers and the tag team action. And, and as I said, MJF and Adam Cole continue their path to All In. And we'll see who wins that match. Um, yeah. I think I, I think I already talked about that, did I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I think I already talked about uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah, I did. Major pay -per -view shows. So... Ah, uh, come on. Um, Mike will end the video. I think I made the video long enough. Make sure you guys hit that like button, leave a comment, please subscribe to my channel. I think it's been about 30 minutes, so. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the support. I will be back with more. Um, I will you see how the show being booked. But until next time, see y'all later.